the piano must pay. Uh, the piano in question is the public piano at uh, one of the major railway stations in London. It has been very naughty. It has been, it has been a suspect in a devious crime of anti-CCP activity. And thankfully, the British police are doing everything they can to stop that damn thing. You don't know what I'm talking about. This uh, builds off where we left off on a different segment, which is this chap. Now, this chap, Brendan over here, he plays the piano. He plays the public piano. So I think this is um, not Paddington. I forget which station. Is it, it Euston? I don't know this, but that looks like Euston. No, it's not Euston. I used to go through it when I went to Canterbury. St. Pancreas, there we are. Yeah, so I've been through it a few the, times. Yeah. Takes you on the Eurostar or down into Kent. Anyway, he goes there, plays piano, films playing piano. People like it. All right, all good. It's, it's not that complex. So nice, simple situation. And um, this is another day in his life where he goes down and does that. And for the crime of doing that, um, the piano must die. So this story starts out with him meeting this chap here. And as he describes it, there's a Japanese film crew behind him filming something for Japanese TV. That's his uh, belief. So we'll play this so we can get the full context of everything that went on and then assess what kind of capital punishment the piano will receive. Nice. Absolutely amazing. Jim, Jim's here with the whole, uh, Jap there's a whole Japanese TV group. I think she's getting a nice guy. She go, hello, can you dance? Can you do a dance? Let's get this girl to dance. Yeah, can you dance? 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 Can you yeah. Local man thinks there's some, some Japs behind him. You may have noticed they're carrying Chinese flags. I was going to say, does he not see their flag? Yeah. Bit odd. I don't know why he presumes they're Japanese. I don't think he's, um, you know, a, a man of international politics. He's a man of piano playing. Mm -hmm. That's his uh, career. And it's fine. You know, he likes interacting with the public and that might be a bit uh, jaunty at times, but yeah, yeah, you know, that's what a character is and that's what he's doing. Now, the, the controversy begins because as you can see there, the two ladies are having a word with this chap next to him because they're very upset because he's uh, committed a crime, which is that he filmed them. You evil bastard. So they decide to come over and uh, complain about it to him. In St. Pancras Station? Yes. A public place? Yes. Hi folks, sorry to interrupt the video, but I just wanted to announce that we have a new line of merch in our merch store. The merch store was kind of empty for a while, and so I thought, right, okay, what do I actually want on shirts? And so I just went through some of the most epic and true things that I think that historical people have said, and John managed to make an amazing set of merch out of it. And we will have extra things coming in the store, such as posters for these to go on. Uh, thanks for everything, folks. Now back to the video. They're also making a video, and they were stood there where the video was being filmed in quite a deliberate way, as if they were watching it. Yeah, it's, it's a... We'll get back to the fact that this is a weirdly more complicated than it seems, but this is what everyone has seen, because mm -hmm. you see here, I mean, this has got 6 million views. Yeah, even I've seen it. This uh, had, I think, this morning when I copy pasted the links so we could see it, it had 5.8 million. It was got 200,000 in the last couple of hours. Or how long we've been here. And you can see there's a live chat as well, in which people were just shocked at what occurred, which is she comes up and is mad. I miss it because we're in your film for Chinese TV as well. Oh, yeah. yeah did you film us all of us in your cameras? Uh, are we, are we, uh, I don't know. Are we allowed? Well. No, we're, we're, we're not allowed. Yeah, yeah, so we, we're not allowed? You're not allowed because, because we're for Chinese TV. So oh, okay. This is non disco. So. It's not disco? Yeah, no, 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 it's not disco. It's no disco. <laughs> <laughs> It's not disposable. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, did you think that you out? So, will we, 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 get, we get in trouble uh, with the Chinese government? Maybe not. I don't know. But you said you found Japanese. No, no, they'll put you in prison, mate. So, <laughs> so just say that according to the Japanese the Chinese law, we're not allowed to film you. Is that right? So, so basically, no, um, yes. we will much appreciate it when you are, whatever you're doing, that oh, you yeah. don't put our face on, on, oh. on, on yes, TV. Yes, yes. Okay, yeah. so what, what will happen if you do that? Just don't do it. 
it, please. I, I will really appreciate that. Okay. We we just very yeah. sensitive about this. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. really really sorry, I'm but really we love sorry. your music. Yeah, we would want to stay here for a lot longer. I mean, the only the only yeah. thing is, it's just it's just like there's other people filming as well. And that's absolutely fine. That's the other people's business. They can make their own decisions. So, that's uh, absolutely uh, so fine. So how come Sarah? Uh, the only issue it's I've just got. not us, please. Just not us. No, but please. what I'm saying is, there's other yeah. people filming you as well. Oh no no no! no. It, it's just just make sure that we are very very secure in the reason that we don't want our voice or picture being filmed okay. and then yeah that's just the relationship between you and me you uh, and us what, basically what, what relationship just now we are very so i'm gonna repeat that yeah. all of us we cannot share our images online right yeah there's because no reason why, why? We, that's our choice that's our right. Oh, so it's, it's not a legal thing? It is a legal thing because yeah. this is our right, what we're protecting and we want don't want our voice, our images okay. to be revealed online. I'm really appreciating it. This is not your fault, obviously, yeah. and this is not our fault, obviously. That we, ha we have our own agreement with other people that we cannot be shown online. Okay. We are so sorry about this. So who, who's allowed to record you then? Uh, just, just making sure you're not recording us, yeah? Because if you are recording us, that when we are saying this, you're still recording, and then we will put a legal action into it. Oh, okay. Yeah, we will put a legal yeah, action into it. For what? We will. At this stage, at this stage, that guy is just within his rights to say, no, screw you. Of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, who, who are you? And whatever he says, I don't care who you are, actually. It doesn't matter who you are. Um, just, no, I'm not doing anything you're asking me to do. They're in trying. This situation, just get out of my face. They're trying so hard not to say that we'll get in trouble by our government. Because if they say that, then it, it makes it more likely. That. So if you listen to some of the words they say, they, the reason they give, uh, maybe I've preempted it, is that they say that they're going to issue legal action, you might have heard at the end there. Mm -hmm. And what they're saying is that he's violated their image rights. Now, image rights aren't a thing here. Right, I'd say it's just, that's just nonsense, right? But I can't sell trading cards with Josh and Bo pictures on. That would be something, because that would be using your likeness and whatnot to make me money. You're but, welcome to do it, though, if you want. <laughs> yeah, you get all the stats top, on there. Lotus Eaters top trumps, yeah. But if I'm filming you in my public place, you have no rights to any kind of privacy in public. That's because you're in public. Put your pals, trans on, trousers on. You, you know. <laughs> so that's how that works. So, of course, filming someone who, works, who has a profile, it also doesn't matter. Right? These people say they work for Chinese TV, so they have some kind of profile, and therefore they have image rights. And in China, apparently, it is a legal issue if you decide to uh, film them without their permission. It's a bit unclear, but then it's Chinese law. So when is it clear? And then they go on, and he says, the, the white chap here, he, he turns to the, the Chinese boys and says, um, we're not in communist China, in response to them saying about their legal threat. And the guy who, who's saying he's going to sue him says, that's a racism. Because of course. Oh dear. No, I suppose we don't have time to play the whole thing, but that's, the, that's where this is going. And you'll notice a pattern here in the type of behavior. And in fact, after that immediate interaction of saying that it's racist to call them communist or from communist China or say that we are not in communist China, even though they're flying communist flags, he gets really fake aggressive for no reason. So we can see here. Got a Chinese flag it doesn't matter. Show me the Chinese matter. flag. Why are you touching her? Stop touching her! Don't touch her. Please touch do flag. not touch her. Please. You are not the same age. Please do not touch her. <laughs> don't touch her. Please don't touch her. Please don't. Yeah, don't touch her. Don't touch her. Don't touch her. Please 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 don't touch her. No, we love your art. We love your music. But we are trying to have because you're touching my friend. Are you allowing her to touch you? Didn't even touch her. No, you touched her flag. It doesn't matter. You're approaching her with your hands. You're getting a bit aggressive. I'd lose my rag with that deed at that point. You don't just shout at someone like that. Yeah, in, expect, in a public and place as well. to get away with it. Expect to not be sort of it's serious now. Mm. Like yelling things like that, he knows what he's doing. It's like psychological yeah. warfare to get his own way, isn't it? That's what he's doing. He's realized that this guy is not going to yeah. budge. And so he's using different tactics to try and shame him into uh, doing what he wants. Or, or sh It's like shouting fire in a crowded theater as well. If you're saying, don't touch her, really loudly in a major station. Well, you're, you're trying to signal for other people to get like join in and say, hang on a minute, what are you doing, mate? It's, Why are you touching up a Chinese lady? I'm glad I have your uh, psychology expertise here because it's, it's very much that. And I, I've mm. bought on this and I think it's very true that this is an aspect of them coming from communist China because people who live under communist systems or live in that environment 
like, tell me if I'm wrong, but I think that that in you creates something where you have a perception that the group right fundamentally trumps the individual right. So in an interaction like this, you know, there's a group of us, you need to agree with us. And then the fact that he's merely disagreeing, regardless of whether or not it's legal, it's obviously legal, that's him committing some kind of sin against them. Because of course, they're thinking from this communist mindset of just like, yeah. no, we've told you what will be most good for stability, let's say, which is just comply. And you're not agreeing. So then he just gets angry and aggressive. Nonsensical arguments, whether or not it's nonsensical doesn't matter. It's all fair game because you're trying to make someone agree with your line. Um, yeah. There's that. So you can see they go on. They argue some more and more. He keeps calling him racist for it. Um, the, the thing he's calling him racist for is, is saying communist China. Or saying that these people are from communist China. Or that the UK is not communist China. Well, they're, they're well, waving communist flags. Is communism a race now? Yes. <laughs> I didn't, didn't realise that, that Marxist-Leninism or whatever it is, Maoism, proto-neo-Maoism, I didn't realise that was an ethnicity. Well, now... Now I'm, you know, explicitly anti-communist. Does that mean, by extension, I've joined the uh, <laughs> 4chan brigade? Damn, there you are. Um, for people who don't know the point here, because I imagine this chap probably doesn't. He he knows the Chinese flag for sure, but of course the Chinese civil war didn't really end. So you have here mm. Taiwan, which is the Republican Chinese, the real Chinese, true China, yeah. And then you have the, the Maoist group, which obviously took over China, and are the communist Chinese. And there's the reason. That's the reason they still have the tai Taiwan dispute, which is the both parts of China, Taiwan and mainland China, they both agree that it's China, they just disagree on who should be in charge, communists or not communists. That's the disagreement. So it's not just he has the flag of his country, he does have the flag of one side of still an ongoing dispute in his country, which is the communist Chinese flag. So he's not even wrong to point out, no, that is the communist one. Never mind the obvious insanity of being like, that's a racism. <laughs> but that guy has been in the UK for quite some time. And he's well versed in our language at this point. And I don't mean English, I mean our political language. And the fact that to shut someone down, you just call them racist. It's very evident that's the reason he did this. He understands our political culture, which is weak and pathetic in the sense that we will just go, oh, never mind, sorry. We can zoom that out right. also, right, to the macro level that the Chinese government, the CCP themselves understand that. Yes. And use it against the West. They've released um, public statements. I remember after. Um, George Floyd died, mm. um, they released a statement about racism in mm -hmm. America. It's like, hmm. Kidding me. It's long running. I mean, the Soviet Union, for example, if you go back and read their uh, propaganda outputs, th they've known for a long time. This is a very, very weak point of the Anglosphere, specifically the Americans, because they're the, the global enemy for the communist internationals. Um, so that's why they're using it. And it's well understood by those who wish to shut down something. And that's the reason this chap did it. And what's interesting, because that's, that's sort of, you know, arrogant foreigner who thinks they can dominate you and force laws that don't exist on you because they don't like you. That's that interaction, right? Mm. The fifth columnist. That's, I've used, used, keep using that word recently, but I feel like that's exactly what that guy is. Maybe. I mean, to be as charitable as possible, this also happens with just tourists. So you'll get arrogant tourists who turn up and then get mad that you don't do what they do. And then you just have to remind them, sorry, you're a guest here. We don't do that. And that's not going to change. And you have it when you go abroad sometimes. You may occasionally think, God, what's wrong with everyone? And then you realize, oh no, it was their country, they're weird. God, I'm going to be home soon. <laughs> like, it was so difficult visiting India, you know, <laughs> not using the toilet. Things like this, right? I've, I've never been to India, that's a joke. But the, I, re I refuse to go. But the extreme interaction there of like, uh, you know, filming me is some kind of crime with uh, someone from a communist country. But what was um, the fact that blew this up even more was not just that, that interaction, it was the police. Now you can see here the police turn up and... This guy, who's complaining, the most vocal one, instantly goes to the male police officer to tell him what's wrong, <laughs> which is that he's being filmed. And Sexist. Let's listen. So, yeah. So basically, they were filming, and I would say, it was nice to be a person, so we need to lose our image. Is that right? Is that right? I know, but we're walking around in the public if they're filming. So I don't know if you could catch it there, but yeah. the police officer's response is just boredom on his face. He goes, <laughs> you're in a public place. <laughs> <laughs> right, and I'm not going to play you all, but basically, he goes back and forth with this Chinese guy, where he's just like, "Shut up, <laughs> you're wasting my time." But so the cop did take the the correct line. The male one mm. did. Right. Now the female one will notice something. If we are, if we're having a so police matter, we need to put that down. No, we're past because I'm on the No, you don't. No, you don't. Yeah. 
her first interaction is to What's come her up. name and number? What's her name and number? Report her to the IPCC or whatever. Yeah. She is on her shoulder there, you might notice, with a camera recording, but a member of the public recording her needs to be shut down. Yeah, there's, there's no reason why you should do that. This has been a long running battle between photographers and police. If you go back, um, uh, what was it? Crime Bodge we used to talk about. Wonderful channel. He had a lot of instances where people would film police officers, British ones, and they would get so uppity they'd arrest him for filming in public because he was filming a police officer. And every single time this went to court, the person who was arrested got a boatload of money because it's not a crime. What's wrong with you, police officer? But in the modern age where even the police now carry body cams, and it's been years since all this has been settled in court um, endless times, I still can't really believe that that's real. Mm. Police officers still do come up and be like, put your phone down. How dare you record me? They should have learned their lesson by now, really. You'd it used think. to be um, back in the late 90s or early 2000s, 2010s, that we used to have uh, May Day, quote unquote, riots nearly every year. And it came up loads in that, mm. that the cops didn't like people filming them. Mm. And yeah, the person would actually win when it came to court. To be fair, if I were walking around in public and someone started filming me, it would be annoying. Yeah, but what are you going to do? I, I'm, not, I'm not defending. Yeah, right, I know. You have no expectation of privacy, which is why you wear clothes. But hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> but you, this... you had me doubt myself for a second. Like, do I? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a bad dream. You wake up, you're hosting. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, this uh, escalated further. And what made this blow up so much is that this police officer then goes on. I'll play a bit. Listen, listen, this is, this is going on your YouTube channel. But I need to speak to you without this being on your YouTube channel. Well, what please. about what? Is it proper in a public space? Listen, can I just have a conversation with you? Without so passive aggressive. No, uh. but because the camera never lies. Listen, Aaron. I've got my camera on. Okay, so I've got my camera on. Let's have a conversation then. This is going on your YouTube channel, and I don't want it to goes around in circles because when you're dealing with a genuinely stupid person, you actually can't win the argument. Mm. There's actually the ultimate put down <laughs> of winning a debate is if the person is too stupid to understand your point, you can't win. They, they, they will walk away believing they've won. And this individual is one of them. What's funnier though, is if she goes on, because then he says, um, well, I don't care if I'm recording, quote, the fucking Chinese. And she says, don't say that. <laughs> it's a public order uh, offense at that point. The swear word, yes. So he says, oh, no, I'm sorry, I retract. I can't say a swear word in front of a police officer. She says, well, don't call them Chinese. <laughs> what do you refer to them as then? <laughs> like, They've got communist Chinese flags. They're Chinese nationals. They're ethnically Chinese. What, what? Orientals? But this is the thing I referred to last time I spoke about this issue. The police officers, we've seen the misconduct hearings. These people are trained to be stupid. They are trained to be woke weirdos. And if you aren't, you will get kicked out. The misconduct hearings. Right. We read the full pages. But that's, that's the story. That's what blew this all up. And um, Brendan's been doing this for ages, as you can see. It's, you know, he's done some interviews recently about the Chinese thing, but this is, it goes on forever. Right? This is all he does. Let's go, Brendan. Yeah. These, uh, you know, all the pianos, we have free pianos lying around because they're good fun and light up the place. But that particular one in St. Pancreas is a favorite of his. And that's not the whole truth, though. That's what everyone's seen, the six million viewed video. Okay. The truth is a little bit more complex which in this video, you'll see. Jim is the production manager for a Japanese TV crew who are actually here in St. Pancras recording. So just tell people what you're And we doing. first, I first met Brendan when we were doing exactly the same program five years ago. Okay. And where we played the blues together. But at the time I had to get permission from the, uh, <laughs> from the director to play. And I, I've got permission to, to today as well, by the way. Now we're making another program about the, the public piano. Uh, but this time we're- For using, Japan. For, for, Japan. for Japan, yeah. And we're using a presenter this time, a Japanese. Uh, young Japanese street where, where, So, oh, uh, I like them. I don't nice. know where Did you see? Did you look at these? Hello. Oh, wow. Hello. 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 Are you are you from Japan? No, I'm from China. Oh, oh, okay. are you, are, are, is she part of your crew? No, no, no. I thought she was no, part no, of your crew. No, no, we, we're, we're working for we're working for Japanese yeah. television, and the young lady is Chinese. Yeah, she's very Chinese. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, wow. What's your what's your name? My name is Adelina. Oh, Brendan. Very very nice. Do you do do play? Oh, oh, yeah. So then they go on to play. So they actually did meet before this incident. Perfectly friendly. That's the reason he says Japanese, is because right. the chap there is working for Japanese TV. But seemingly that's actually not this group of people. And the reason I play all that is because this didn't end in the Anglosphere. This wasn't a conversation we were having. Most people talking about this incident are Chinese. Huh. This flew up in China. This is where the story gets big. And as you can okay. see, this is a, a person in China who's an influencer. There's a video here and uh, the person talking about it. 
And this in China is a completely 180 version of the narrative. It's not, well, obviously, weird foreigner thinks they know better than us trying to enforce their laws. It's instead that this evil YouTuber was trying to cause racist tension for clout. And he wouldn't respect, for example, their non-disclosure agreement that the Chinese people had signed with their TV company. You mean the one that the guy <laughs> playing the piano had not signed or yes. even knew about? <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. And then they play that video there to show that, oh no, it was all fake. He knew about these people and then uh, pretended that they were Japanese because he secretly hates Chinese people and was trying to get them out. <laughs> it's like, no, no. Um, most normal people really don't give a toss <laughs> about the differences between Japan or China. <laughs> Never mind understand the, the horrific history you two have. So there we are. That's, that's what the reality is. But as you can see... If they were Japanese, they would have been more polite. Yeah, as you can see, they, they list a whole bunch of stuff where they're just like, this, uh, this evil YouTuber was trying to start drama for profit because he's trying to provoke discrimination with his piano. He's an evil capitalist that sows division for money. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that is the narrative. And that... what, what a surprise that the Chinese decide to go with a cynical inversion of the truth. Of course. No way. That's surprising, isn't it? And it's obviously false because if they just chose to ignore him, none of this would have happened. If they chose to not try and influence him and put the law on him, nothing would have happened. If they had just been nice about it, nothing would have happened. If they didn't call the police, nothing would have happened. This is all their own doing. But who are these people? Well, people found them. I mean, this guy here, he was the angry one. Um, he works in the... Uh, he's a Chinese national. New, new and long here. He is contracted with the Financial Times on localizing data foundation programs. I don't know what that's about, but there we are. He's also spent his life teaching Mandarin and French in England. So there we are. Now, his Facebook activity here is now wiped, but it mostly includes stuff like this before he wiped it, which is him arguing that Chinese people of Chinese heritage should get uh, time off for Chinese New, New Year, which... In, in, in Britain. Yes, special ethnic rights for ethnic minorities in Britain. That's... But we don't necessarily get time off for regular New Year, do we? No. <laughs> it's not how it works, but yeah. this is the weakness again of our civilization, which is that we're willing to give up when someone comes to us and says, I have special. How is this needs. not a fifth columnist? Well, that's the, that's the thinking. I feel like that is sort of the perfect description of, of Mr. Leng. Take the exact reverse, do it in China, you're going to prison. And he's not the only one. Um, this is one of the other ladies here. This is the lady who was initially complaining. Hmm. She spends her time running a. Uh, recruitment agency. Now, the recruitment agency is entirely in Chinese and is entirely based on Chinese nationals who wish to further their careers in London and gain more power and money there. So there we are. That's, that's that. And the final person of interest is the one that sparked most interest, which is the lady in her little outfit. Because it turns out... Her name's Byron. She runs... Sorry, no, this is... A, the account's called Byron. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I had to leave oh, right. fair enough, fair enough. They've all got uh, English names. Yeah, they uh, always change their first name. Yeah, I so doubt yeah. He, that guy, Mr. Leng's real first name is Newton. Yeah, it's not I doubt, <laughs> doubt it. It's some Chinese thing. But she's the most interesting one because not only all these people in that capacity working for Chinese state TV, you may have noticed the red scarves they were all wearing that were the same. It's production. She also runs state events for the Chinese government and spends her time mingling with the British political elite. That's not just any elite either, is yeah. it? I'll get it um, up. He's known for having connections to the Chinese Communist Party, isn't he? This is Jeremy Hunt. I forget, is it his wife or something is Chinese? His wife is Chinese, yes. Once referred to her as Japanese, which was funny. How do you not own your own wife's ethnicity? But Better in her place. <laughs> <laughs> as, as, as you can see, they don't like it. But he, um, during the lockdown, was demanding that China actually was perfect, did nothing wrong, and that we should follow their model. He was the main proponent of lockdown at the time. And she is also mingling with various others. I mean, former Prime Minister Theresa May, Andrea Leadsom, some old minister, and then various other individuals. So yes, I mean, these people are actually not just doing it for fun. They are agents of the state in this regard, because if you have a communist system and you work for their TV station, well, you're right, Bo. They are fifth columnists by definition. I mean, they might not see it that way, but that's, that's what they're doing. So she's not just a Chinese citizen. She is a party member, surely. I would have thought almost. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But mm. you know, you put money on that. A state asset for the for the Chinese, because the whole population is by de facto, because they all belong to the state. That's it was just communist theory. So yeah. there we are. That's an event. And okay, a bunch of like you know, two billion people in China are uh, seething and coping because we have the right to film in public. Who cares? 
<laughs> one of the few rights we have left, I think. Yeah, everyone's concerned, obviously, about what kind of influence is going on. But um, as on that, fair enough, I, I get the, that point. But what was awful is that these people's attempt to bully us into their way of life actually did succeed fundamentally. Because this is what happened to the piano. Oh, The British police and the, well, presumably the railway staff, decided to then corner it off as if the piano itself is guilty <laughs> of a crime and now must sit in a little cell. So Must be subject to a, a struggle session. <laughs> must learn why playing certain songs is something that's going to happen again. Get a troika <laughs> to pass judgment yeah. on it. You've been playing out of key, you see. But what the hell? With the Communist Party. What kind of response is this? The piano is guilty of a crime. Quickly get rid of it. Like that's, that's actually the British response, which again is such a re- revelation of our weakness. Yeah, pure weakness, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And to what? Some arrogant foreigners who thought they could issue laws that don't exist to us who want to play the piano. <sighs> Utterly frustrating to deal with. But there we are. If you have uh, recommendations for the punishment for the piano, uh, do let us know and uh, we'll pass them along to the glorious CCP. If you appreciated that episode from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content that's on the site, such as the Contemplation series, this episode on the wisdom of Chinese proverbs. If you'd like to find out what else is being put out, you can follow on Twitter at lotuseaters underscore com on Twitter. Thank you and goodbye.